Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. So I have been looking at wireless mesh technology for a long time, and I finally dived in and started wrapping my mind around, well, what is this high-end access point offerings by Arrow, by Google, by Asus, TP-Link, Netgear, all of them have some type of mesh technology. To my surprise, it's not what you think at all. It's very expensive. When you buy three, three of these devices and you spread them across your home, every one of these vendors, these are their high-end products and they're expensive. Do they have mesh capability? Very few are ever going to use mesh at all. We'll get into that. What do they really bring to the table? Well, they're going to do what most consumers want them to do, is be able to get RF energy, internet access, everywhere in their home effectively. If it's a multiple story home or an L-shaped home or just a large home, it will get that RF energy into all those locations so that you get good bandwidth, everybody can get their 4K videos streamed, mom can run around with her iPad wherever she wants, or dad can run around with his, his mobile phone and watch football on it, and it's going to be satisfactory. One feature that all of these high-end mesh product lines is easy setup. I didn't set them all up. I did the Deco TP-Links unit, and it was fairly easy to set up. The manufacturers have really went out of their way to make this setup easy. What is mesh? First of all, we need to understand that unless we buy at least three of these mesh access points, we're not gonna get mesh. So if you buy one, you're never gonna get mesh. You buy two, you basically have an access point and an extender. Until you buy three, you're never going to get mesh. Mesh is all about redundancy, so that there is the ability to get the signal through a alternate path. So you have to have at least three, four is better, five is better, but most houses don't need that many access points. Most of these mesh offerings from the various vendors will include either Wi-Fi 6E, which includes six gigahertz, or Wi-Fi 7. So why in the world do we need mesh? Well, houses like this are very difficult to get wireless coverage everywhere in the house. Now, if you think about it, I could buy seven access points and put them in every room. And honestly, I could get coverage anywhere in this house very easily. But try taking your iPad on floor number one and moving up to floor number two to floor number three with seven access points and doing that seamlessly. That's going to be a nightmare. So one of the features in these mesh offerings is really not mesh at all. It's seamless roaming, what we enjoy in the enterprise every day. So houses like this, one access point just won't cover the entire square footage or the shape of the house. Being able to distribute access points that allow you to roam seamlessly is beautiful. Multiple floor facilities, especially in large cities, a lot of times houses or apartments or condos have multiple floors. Again, very tough to get wireless coverage, but having an access point on each floor that allows you to seamlessly roam in your home is really what these high-end offerings, these 
mesh wireless are all about. What type of technology do we need in order to have wireless mesh technology? Keep in mind, everything that I've talked about has been in the enterprise for years. They have it, but it's super expensive and complicated to install and set up. So for mesh technology to come in the consumer space, one, we really want those advanced IEEE wireless standards, Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7. We need inexpensive but incredible complex advanced silicon chips with these advanced features available to us. We need it simple to use. Remember, it's consumers. Simple to set up. It's got to be simple to set up. Seamless roaming and effective coverage any, in any location. Those are the requirements we have to have in order to sell these products to the consumer. All of this is available in the enterprise, but it takes some serious cash and some well-trained IT pros to get it to set up and work. So what are things that you really want to pay attention as you look at buying mesh technology for your home? Well, one, all of the manufacturers of mesh technology address the issues I've already talked about, and they do that very well. Things that you really want to pay attention to, how do these manufacturers cool? Do they have good airflow? Do they have air vents? These units dissipate a lot of heat. Are they designed with good cooling? All of these manufacturers produce wireless mesh components or, or access points with built-in antennas, which I don't like. I like access points where I can maneuver the antenna. It's got a, a separate antenna visible outside the case. These are all built internally. Are they designed with a 45 degree angle, especially for a multi-story home? And do they design them well so that you don't have signal interference between all of these radios. You've got a six gig radio, a five gig radio, a 2.4 gigahertz radio. And if they don't design them well, you're gonna have cross interference, poor quality. You're gonna have to buy more of these and put them in your home to compensate from poor engineers. Wi-Fi manufacturers began to look at a cellular technology called SON, self-organizing networks. They called it Wi-Fi Sun. And it's a technology program that allows both cellular and Wi-Fi to create the idea of self-configuration, self-management, self-healing, and self-optimization. Now, most of the wireless mesh technology uses this SUN technology, self-organizing networks. Now, to implement SUN in their products, they had to do a lot of things. They had to go back to their firmware, and modify their firmware, look at Linux, the operating system running their access points, and add features to Linux. And the chip manufacturers had to add complex technology into the chipsets in order to get the self-organizing networks or sun technology into the wi-fi world so what is sun it's automatic configuration self-healing very important dynamic optimization band steering moving devices to different frequency bands load balancing and client steering which is really roaming now you'll find the wi-fi sun technology platform in almost all of the high-end products sold by wireless manufacturers. When we look at IEEE standards, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7, remember, this is all working at OSI layers one and two. Now the dirty secret of wireless is the FCC limits the power out of access points to prevent you from interfering with RF technology of your neighbor or the person above you in an apartment or below you in a condo, the FCC limits the power of all access points. And they also use frequencies like 2.4, 5 gigs, 6 gigs, which quickly fade within 30 meters. All of those create the dilemma of designing RF wireless communication in your home that actually works. Just for an example, look at this home. I've got an access point in this room, this bottom first floor room. It loses half of its power the minute it moves from one side of a wall to the other side of the wall. Half of its power is lost. If you look at the first floor 
and the radio frequency going through the first floor section of the home into the first bedroom in the second floor, you've lost way more than half of your power. So the problem with Wi-Fi is that it loses power quickly. You start off with a low power transmitter in the first place, regulated by the FCC. All the benefits of Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6, 6E, and 7 all play a role on getting a strong signal. But you're starting off with a teeny tiny RF power transmitter in the first place. And you've got walls and you've got floors to absorb that wireless energy. It's very difficult to get Wi-Fi in a home. Look at this diagram here below. Here is a series of demonstrations showing 2.4 gigahertz shown in blue, 5.2 gigahertz shown in red, and we see the transmitted power on the left going through wall number one, and then you begin to see the loss of energy of the 2.4 and the 5 gig. And then we go through wall number two, and you see more dramatic loss. And notice the 5 gig loses more energy than the 2.4. By the time you get to wall number three, forget it. Nobody gets any wireless communication by the third wall. All of this is done by design. The FCC does not want your radio transmission in your home going beyond your home period. If you look at this graphic, we see that we're taking our RF signal and we're going to go through a brick wall. Many homes have brick walls. If we go through a brick wall, we're probably going to lose 12 dB of signal between this side of the RF signal going through the brick wall and coming out. A brick wall will literally kill your wireless transmission. Here's an example of access point placement, which is so critical to 802.11. Notice on the left-hand side, I've got a single story, Joe, who has put his access point under his desk in the furthest room in his home. The RF energy quickly dissipates as it moves through the home. As you get to the right-hand side of the house, the laptop almost gets no RF energy. Here is a better placement of that same access point, putting the access point higher and in the center room of the house, you'll get more RF energy to that laptop in the right side of the home. Here you can see I've got a two-story. John, we're picking on John, he put his access point again under the desk on the farthest left-hand side of the house. You can see that the RF energy is quickly dissipating, just dying very, very quickly. And there's rooms in which no RF energy or very little RF energy is going to reach. That's poor placement for that access point. Over here is a little bit better by putting the access point higher in the center of the house. You're distributing that RF energy going through walls and floors a little bit better. But I can tell you right now, if the house is of any square foot size, this is already a disaster. So one of my pet peeves when I talk about these devices, this has internet, it has two switch port jacks for internal networks. Of course, it's got all the wireless inside. This actually supports Wi-Fi 6E so that it takes advantage of the six gigahertz frequency band. We're gonna use that for an ethernet backhaul from my other extender access point because I don't have three, this is not a mesh, but my extended access point to get my data from this back to my, my internet connected router, I'm going to use a wire, wireless backhaul of six gigs, and that's why it's Wi-Fi 6E. Now this is simply an, an access point, and in reality, this is really not an access point, it's not a router. This is a multi-function device for Joe and Billy Bob and Henry, and they call this a router, or they'll call it a wireless router, but it's not. It's really a multi-function device. This particular device has a Linux operating system on very specialty hardware that's going to provide us many, many network functions. It's gonna provide us two switch ports. 
It's going to provide us a router. It's going to provide firewall. It's going to provide an access point with wireless capability. So this has got a lot of network devices all built into this one inexpensive plastic piece that, we, that I'm holding on my hand. So this is never technically, for the IT pro, the IT student, the technically inclined, this is not a router. Yes, it has a router in it, but this is a multi-function device. Uh, this has got many crucial network components inside that make it work. Why do mesh products from manufacturers today solve these critical problems in our home wireless? Well, one, they add the Sun self-organizing network technology platform so they're easy to set up, easy to configure, self-optimizing, self-managing, which is what homeowners need. They don't have an IT staff in their house and they can't afford thousands and thousands of dollars worth of product to make all that work. But the beauty of it is, is you can quickly add more access points in your home, getting wireless closer to the devices that need access to it. A stronger signal, better bandwidth, lower latency, higher thoroughput in every area that you need in your home. And you can pick up a device and move it somewhere else. So you can put it outdoors, you can put it in every location in your home needed. And the sun does all the ma magic of managing, optimizing, taking care, roaming, everything. Perfect. Let's take a look at my Deco Wi-Fi 6E access point that I purchased. This is the XE75. It has three radios. The radio covers 2.4, 5 gigs, and 6 gigs. That's where the 6E standard comes in, the 6 gigs. Then we have duplexers, RF switches, filters, all kinds of very cool technology inside this access point. Then we have four antennas, and these four antennas are known as tri-band printed circuit board antennas. It allows these four antennas to be used by any one of these radios. Typically, we're gonna use two antennas for the 2.4, two antennas for the five gig, and two antennas for the six gigahertz radio. Now, once we move to Wi-Fi 7, you can use four antennas for each radio. This is known as four by four. Now my cell phone, my Galaxy S21 cell phone, has two radios, software-defined radios. Both of those radios are STA, or station radios. But they can change their software-defined. So I can take a radio and say, stop being a station radio and be an access point. So here's an example of taking my mobile phone. I go to the mobile hotspot feature within my configuration on my phone and I say I want you to take one of the radios that was STA or a station radio and I want you to make it an access point. I'm going to say take the 5 gigahertz radio make it an access point not an STA and give it an SSID of Samsung hacker and people who are nearby me can go to their cell phone or their laptop and they can see this access point called Samsung hacker. It's actually my mobile phone. Wireless companies that are selling these products, these mesh wireless devices, D-Link, Netgear, Linksyst, Asus, all of them, they sell them in a one pack, you can buy them in two packs, you can buy them three packs. Most consumers have no real understanding of the difference and what they're really getting. They're hoping for a elegant solution and in most cases they will get a better solution for their home wireless. If the homeowner buys one mesh router, they're basically getting the same thing as if they did this, a standalone router from any manufacturer. Now this one's really, really nice, but basically they're getting a standalone access point. But if you buy the two pack, you're not getting a mesh access point system. You're getting basically an access point that connects to the internet, and you're getting an extender. Now you are getting the sun, the self-managed, self-optimization, very easy setup, very nice features. You pay more for this, 
but it does have that type of technology built in. You get roaming between the two devices and you get the feature of what we call a wireless backhaul where we're going to take the 6 gigahertz radio and connect it back to this 6 gigahertz radio and this becomes a wireless backhaul. Clients that connect to this access point over here can use the wireless backhaul to connect to the internet connected access point on the left. Finally, until you buy three of these devices, do you get mesh? In this manufacturer, Deco, the TP-Link system, they're going to use the six gigahertz radios to build these wireless alternate backhaul paths. So depending on the clients that connect to these access points, they can find their way back to the access point that's connected to the internet. So they have alternate paths. So if this happens, if I have a situation like a microwave oven is turned on and it interferes with this wireless path, this backhaul path, there's an alternate route for those clients to get back to the access point that has internet. That's mesh technology. What makes all of these mesh wireless systems so expensive is they're having to use the top of the line chipsets for their access points made by Broadcom, Qualcomm, MediaTek, they're having to buy the top of the line chipsets, which makes them more expensive. There is also the industrial specialty chipsets, which are so interesting. This is the Broadcom chipset for these high-end mesh routers. They have a quad-core ARM 64-bit processor that runs the router operating system. So your Linux operating system in the access point runs the router, the firewall, the DHCP server, the printer functions, takes care of RAM and storage, all of those things. You then have to buy specialty chips that are SOCs for the 6 gig, the 5 gig, the 2.4 gigahertz radio. These are very complicated chipsets or system on a chip that provide these phenomenal radios. And then, of course, you have specialty chips or system on a chip, SOCs, for the high-end 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection to your internet provider and any other high-speed Ethernet connections that you have on your particular router. You're going to, again, buy these specialty chips to handle those kinds of speeds. Keep in mind, as we look at software-defined radios, 2.4 gigahertz gives you the best distance, but very limited bandwidth. 5 gigahertz, limited distance, good bandwidth. 6 gigahertz, shorter distance, very wide bandwidth. And 60 gigahertz, if you have it, gives you about 9 meters, very short distance, but extremely wide bandwidth. You can even run HDMI across a 60 gigahertz connection. We encourage you to put comments, feedback in the comment section of the video. I read every comment that is put in the comment section below. And I attempt to respond to as many as I possibly can. There are a few comments that I have no clue what they're trying to tell me. So I probably have not responded to those. If you can become a member, that helps us tremendously. We are putting this content out for you. We want you to use it. We hope that we are educating you and improving your understanding of the technologies that we are presenting in these videos. If they are helping you, we would love for you to become a member. It's $2.99, a cup of coffee a month.